creator of Business is Brutal, Jack Thompson, who when we just have a few questions for him. Hi, Jack. Uh, just wanted to start off by saying that um, Business is Brutal is just one of the most unique horror films we we both have ever seen. Uh, we were blown away when we saw it in the submission feed. <laughs> Would you be able to just tell us more about the general idea behind it and how you came up with the idea? Mm. Um, it's interesting because I think that film now is like three years old. So I've had to kind of like dig back into like where I was three years ago when mm. I was making the film. But um, it kind of came really from an experience that I had <clears throat> in actually an, an American hospital uh, mm -hmm. and like having gone to America and was there like for or, like um, for a short period and I kind of got tonsillitis and like anyway I kind of at that point um, I went to see the GP and it was going to cost like a thousand dollars to see the GP for 15 minutes and then I was trying to leave and even I had like holiday insurance like the people wouldn't let me leave the um like the kind of person that was collecting like the money wouldn't let me leave until I paid a third of the bill. And there was this kind of interesting tension between me and this person that was trying to get the money from me. Uh, and it was kind of weird because I felt like I was in like a place before, like a place of safety and kind of like a place of nurturing or, you know, health. And then suddenly it became like the opposite. It twisted almost to this kind of like, I felt a bit imprisoned. And it was kind of this like, um, kind of like, dissolving of this facade and kind of like this undercurrent that was kind of like propping or kind of like actually still part of this kind of experience that was uh that was kind of like revealed in this moment where I felt like it was all about making me better or you know this kind of thing in my health and then suddenly it was this very weird undercurrent which was felt and it was quite a savage feeling around that and um yeah so kind of actually that I think it's more of that feeling which I kind of then kind of took as kind of like the the sense that I kind of wanted to bring into into this film that I made and kind of made it a little bit more general in terms of like business because I felt like actually it was kind of something that you could um, relate to a little bit more widely as opposed to quite a specific thing that I was kind of experienced but more about this kind of dissolved thing and of this of this kind of conduct that people have this politeness and this way of shaking the hands and it's all very kind of above board but actually the energy and the 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 under the undercurrent of the action can be quite savage and kind of aggressive mm. yeah mm. that really comes across in the movie yeah everyone's so uh it's crazy yeah. and it does have a sort of hospital quality for it to it the more i think about it but obviously you went with business in the end but um uh just talking on the um choreography for a second obviously it's just mm -hmm. a huge part of the film i just want to you to tell me um, a mm -hmm. little bit more about it. Was it difficult to organize a team of that magnitude to achieve your vision, would you say? Um, it was kind of interesting because to, to arrive at the film, I went through many different processes to arrive to this finished thing. So first of all, I actually did like a fashion editorial um, for a fashion publication. So it was a series of fashion stills that I kind of photographed. Um, and even before that point, I had this idea that I wanted to do, which was this kind of like savageness, kind of like mixed in with this kind of politeness. Um, and I tried that first with this kind of model from a modeling agency. And it was really bad um, because she couldn't really physicalize and embody these kind of ideas and kind of make it feel authentic. Uh, so then I kind of twisted this idea a bit more and I just purely worked with dancers into like a fashion editorial. Mm. Um, and that kind of, I worked on this for a while. And then then after creating the aesthetic of kind of the vibe and kind of the energy and kind of the, um, uh, how could you describe? Yeah, I guess the aesthetic really, the colors, the tones, and this kind of like kind of chopping between two states, uh, then it was kind of the next layer was then to take those still images into a moving image, into a film. Mm. Uh, so that's kind of where the choreography became much more of like a complex thing, not just kind of like a moment in time with a photo, but more actually um, something that was happening across time and in, in in like in many different stages and layers with different people and different relationships and kind of you know, this kind of um, yeah kind of uh, feeling versus reality kind of uh, states. So yeah. I don't know if that answers the question. What was it? Any, anything more? <laughs> no, there? no, you did answer the question. It was a, it was just uh, talking more about the choreography and the organization of the team and uh, how you came about that idea. But yeah, you pretty much covered mm -hmm. all bases there. Um, 
Moving on from choreography, though, I also wanted to talk about something else. That it's it's probably the first thing you notice when you watch the film is um just the stunning cinematography that's involved. Um, your DOP, she was called uh, Michelle Cadet, is that right? Um, yeah, so it's funny actually. He's, he's a guy called Michele, and I think oh, people, are, no. <laughs> people often like people often think like it's um it's a lady there, but no, it's a oh, guy Michele. No. But yeah, I think he's he's that. Italian. He's Italian. <laughs> no, it's fine. Don't worry. He gets it all the time. <laughs> well, he's excellent anyway. Uh, did you work closely with him to achieve the look of the film? Um, yes, in many ways, and also no, in many ways as well. I think having done this fashion editorial before, maybe I can send you some of the images. Actually, maybe you can mm. also include it part of the interview. Yeah. Um, it was the, the the aesthetic and kind of like the high finished kind of polished feeling. Um was kind of already established. So I had these references that I could give him and say, okay, this is what we're trying to achieve. Hmm. And it was very clear. There was no kind of, uh, we didn't have to have too many conversations around um, what we were trying to achieve because it was the vision was kind of there in terms of like the look. However, um, there was many conversations around, um, I guess like, yeah, like the, the motion in between these different scenes and actually like that kind of quality and that kind of feeling between those um, I think this was quite an important um, part of kind of something he has quite intuitively in the way he works. It's like, oh, I think we should do it like this and da 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 da, da. Mm -hmm. So yeah, these kind of conversations were happening. Um, but I think it was kind of quite, um, I think it was, it felt very, um, I wouldn't say organic because it really wasn't kind of, we arrived at this point. It was kind of like something was established that we could both kind of be like, okay, this, yeah, I understand what that is. Let's pull this extra thing in here. Maybe it's going to be a bit more, bloody or it's going to be a bit more kind of this vibe and it's also fine so it was um yeah he was great really good to work with and actually i, I worked with him again on another film as well so it was really cool so i know he's, he's it's cinematography is excellent and it really it's beautiful it's, yeah. it's excellent for the film I, I, yeah i hope i get to see another one of his films see shoot someday as well definitely uh do you have any questions Dave? yeah yeah uh so the sound of our uh Sorry, the sound design of this film must have been very important to obviously get the choreography right. Uh, would you be able to tell us more about the process of perfecting that sound for the film? Yeah, this was um, also a bit of a funny story, actually, because um, the sound for the film um, was basically, I went to a gig a few years back by this, she's a punk Inuit throat singer. And uh, she has such an interesting, um, especially live, like such a vibe. Like I went to a gig and was kind of like dancing around mm -hmm. uh, and she has such a kind of like animalistic kind of like quality to the way she kind of uses her voice. And it's very abstract in many ways mm -hmm. to, I guess like to the Western ear, it kind of sounds very kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's like very kind of, uh, like the communication is, it feels quite abstract. I could say it, I'm not really describing that so well, but, um, the, uh, I really enjoyed the, particularly the track that we was using and I kind of was like like kind of creating some choreography, kind of improvising, dance improvisation to it and moving around and moving the body. And um, I kind of really fell in love because it gave the right energy to, um, to the movement um, because it kind of felt like it was coming from within and somewhere very deep. So we, anyway, I kind of had this track in mind. The dancers were using this track when we were rehearsing. We made the film and then we just put the track with the film and we didn't really have permission to use it. So we kind of just sent it off to the record label with her and was kind of, I sent a letter and I was kind of fingers crossed, hopefully she's going to say it because she's based in Canada. And um, they got back to us and they said like, they really love the, they really loved like what we did with the sound and they could see a lot of connection between also kind of the vibe that she likes to work with because she works a lot with um kind of like animals and wolves and kind of like sometimes with blood as well and it's kind of like often because it's kind of in like near the Ant antarctic no so it's near the um yeah not antarctic that's below isn't it yeah antarctica it? below arctic at the top arctic so above <laughs> yeah. yeah that's it i'm like um <laughs> yeah, the arctic like the region there's a lot of kind of like snow and like kind of like um ice and stuff like this so there's kind of this kind of white aesthetic also as well which is present in some of her like music videos so it's kind of like the sharpness mixing with this kind of wolf and this kind of thing so i think there was quite a um somehow like a di very different, but somehow like it fed, fed into each other. And they kind of said, 
I think usually they would charge thousands for stuff like to release that track. Um, but they said, okay, you can have it for a few hundred quid because we really we really like what you've done. So we was like, yeah. <laughs> Obviously <laughs> great when you have that meeting. So that was a <laughs> so yes. Oh, sorry, you cut out there. <laughs> Um, it's obviously great when you have that meeting of the minds and, you know, uh, it sounds like you both obviously had the same vibes, like you said, it just um, goes hand in hand. Um, that kind of like primal aesthetic you were going for in that clinical setting. Um, mm-hmm. So a, a lot of films like this also tend to have a deeper meaning that, like like yours uh, that may not be picked up upon in the first viewing. Uh, do you like to be explicit and tell people about your themes or would you rather they come to their own conclusions first and then, yeah? Um, it's weird. I feel like, especially when I was uh, making this film, I feel like it was very important for me to deliver a message or at least kind of like a strong direction towards uh, an opinion or like a certain feeling, which I guess was coming from that kind of revealing of the facade and kind of like this more savage undertones, which are kind of like present even in the most politest or kind of um, kind of like the most sophisticated environment, you could say. Um, <clears throat> but I feel like I feel like yeah, for that for that particular place of making, I feel like I was quite on the head in terms of like the message that I was trying to project or kind of like at least kind of explore in in the kind of this in this film. Um, but I feel like now where I'm at is a little bit more kind of just setting up a proposal and maybe allowing other people to kind of like fit themselves within kind of the concept of um like the kind of stuff that I'm making um and try not to be uh, playing a little bit more with like a subtlety and a nuance in the message as opposed to kind of like this is what I think and so bold um but uh, but at the same time that's just kind of I think just somewhere where I'm at in my own life whereas when I was making this it was kind of much more about yeah let's kind of execute this and kind of do this how we want to do it you know I definitely think now that we know the story behind it as well, that definitely adds another element, especially maybe it's just because we're from the UK as well. We have, we don't have the same um, dilemma of having to pay um, extensively for, for healthcare um, yeah. or be put in that position, but it's definitely um, brutal <laughs> from our perspective. Yeah. Um, and it definitely uh, kind of makes the film better in my head. Um, after yeah, adds to that's... another watch definitely like yeah. i can't wait to see it yeah again, that perspective <laughs> yeah um, are, are you uh working yeah, on anything it... at the moment oh sorry good i think that particular sorry sorry go ahead sorry <laughs> no, i was saying like i feel like the the, the hot the hospital story is not so important for this film it's more i guess like the kind of i guess the experience that happened to me that was then put into a, a film but I think it's um, so. I guess like this feeling of like this hospital um, situation is not so important about that message, but it's more about that kind of uh, yeah, the undercurrents and the kind like of communication, double, double-handed, double-sided. Kind yeah, of. exactly. I think this is kind of more the the revealing of this. I think is more. Sorry, yeah. Mm. Sorry, yeah. yeah. Are you working on infinite at the moment, or is there any anywhere we can look to uh, find your current work or anything you're working on? Um, I'm kind of always working on random stuff <laughs> um, and it somehow it always forms into something eventually. It takes me a long time to um, create things actually in a weird way. Um, I have to do, I have so many ideas that I need to refine and um, pull together, make connections with separate ideas to kind of create new meanings or like meanings that I feel like kind of a more... Um, kind of like closer to what I'm trying to uh, kind of um, explore. Um, this year in May, I'm uh, a, a film that I made last year got released uh, and that was kind of um, broadcast on BBC4 as part of like a dance on film, um, dance, yeah, dance on film program. Um, so yeah, that's something that could be checked out. It's on iPlayer right now. Um, it's called We Are Ready Now. And this is kind of like a dance film, which has very little dance in it. Um, and it's kind of, I feel like I would say it's a bit more of a moving image work rather than kind of like a, a cinema kind of, um, kind of like, yeah, like a film film, like that you're going to go to the cinema see. It's much more kind of just like a moving image, kind of artist moving image piece. 
so yeah you can see that one um on the bbc iplayer um now so yeah well, I think your work is definitely going to stand out amongst the films we have as um, kind of a different shift of uh, type of film, if that makes sense. Um, so I think it'll be very interesting to include it. And um, yeah, uh, when we do a future uh, project, uh, a future festival, we'd, be, we'd love to have your work in that as well. <laughs> Thank you. No, it's very excited to also be part of the festival. Yeah, we, we love your film. It's so good. Where, where can people follow you if they want to keep a tabs on you? Um filmmaking or anything like that it's any way you post yeah um kind of on instagram people can follow on my website so my instagram tag is um at jack thompson uk thompson without a p so the t-h-o-m-s-o-n uh, and my website is just like www.jack hyphen like middle hyphen um thompson without a p dot com <laughs> so yeah so it's kind of like that i think most of this stuff there is kind of a lot of my photography work and some choreography work but mainly yeah mainly that stuff that i'm kind of sharing at the minute if since the lockdown mm. just kind of random stuff yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get by somehow you know? <laughs> yeah well yeah i guess that's everything thanks so much for talking to us jack it's been really fascinating to get to know you and your film a bit better <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. I'm excited also to um, tune in. Yeah, it's going to be good. It'll be up on uh, Saturday. It should be 7 p.m., but we'll, we'll see what happens. Halloween's coming. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> so it's cool. All right. Well, well, um, well. Yeah. thanks for the interview, and um, yeah, we'll see you around. So uh, this is uh, Eric Eli, who uh, created the short horror film Nata, uh, or Nata, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, is that correct? Well, here we say Nata. Uh, Nata, What does that stand for, by the way? What, is, what does it um, translate to? Actually, uh, we we hadn't translated yet, but in English it, it would be like Chris, because Christmas. Oh. Oh, ah, okay. Nata nice here is Natal because of Christmas. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so first of all, it's uh, it's always interesting to see a horror film that takes place at Christmas. So um, given you know the whole contrast and themes, horror of Christmas. Uh, what what was your main reason uh, for doing that? Well, um, I guess we we are looking for for a theme. You have like it's it's the it's a student short film. And we basically were, were searching for a, a theme for the, 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 the short and we guess horror. Uh, what about we do something like Christmas? I don't know. I, I don't really know where it, it, this was born, but <laughs> but I guess it was a mix of uh, some things we think would, would be cool to do, like the lights, uh, Christmas tree, and the characters. And we have a like, this moment when the family is all together, but you have just two characters yeah. that they go to another room and they, they go like, oh, let's play something like a little bit different, you know, like trying to, to communicate with some 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 people from the past, I guess. Yeah. It, it may also surprise you to hear that we didn't receive too many submissions that had Ouija boards in the film, um, perhaps because it's hard to get that right. However, the acting in this film specifically was amazing. Uh, was it difficult for you at all to direct them, given their, their skill and talent? Well, we we did record everything in one day, uh, one night specifically. We, we have this time, but we, we, we in the rehearsal, we did like four or five rehearsals, and the actors were great. I mean, everyone was like in the spirit of the film, uh, so excited about doing something. Uh, related to horror and this is this was great actually I mean the whole team yeah. the whole crew I mean those are the best environments when you've got everyone who's 
eat into the film and wants it, wants it to be the best thing it can be. You can't ask for anything right. more, really. Uh, the film also has a huge emphasis on the horror, but also has quite a large emphasis on the family as well. Was it important for you to strike that balance between the two um, two themes? I'll, I'll, can you ask again? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, so it was it important for you to strike the balance between the theme of family and horror in this film? Oh, yeah. Um, mainly because we were uh, working with Black actors and a Black family in the, in the story. And we wanted to do something that, I mean, uh, didn't get this character uh, essentially wrong, you know? I mean... Uh, you have this this family. It's a, it's a good family, it's a great family, but they never met the, their 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 granddad, mm -hmm. the grandfather, and you know what it's like to know. I mean, uh, we uh, paternally talking, it, it's hard to meet the, those people, and you you never met, and you we're really focused on this. I mean, how to construct this family, you know. It's a family that exists, a family you can recognize when you see on the screen, you know? Mm. Yeah, it's obviously important to get those. If you're looking for those bonds, then uh, maybe a Ouija board is a way to uh, gain that, uh, get that conversation. <laughs> ben, have you got a few questions? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to um, go in off theme some more into filmmaking for a second here. I just wanted to comment on the cinematography uh, throughout the film. It's quite interesting. Um, it's got some quite interesting angles. And uh, one I can remember now is um, uh, towards the end when the camera turns 180 degrees. It's a great shot um, on the spot. You know the one? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Was it difficult for you to get the shots you needed um, just in one location or was it quite an easy thing? I mean, um, I, we visited before and we were like um, thinking about the space. I mean, we got the the fall from the boy, we got some action scenes like hitting the table, some things like this. And we're like, oh, we have, we have I mean, you should get some some safe space in here, you know? <laughs> and, but the cinematography, Bruna, she was great. I mean, she really knows how to handle a camera. This is probably the best. And the light we have, we had some great equipment. Oh yeah, the lighting was impressive in particular. That's what I wanted to ask about next, actually. Um, it, it, it's very impressive to me when I'm watching the film, the uh, level of lighting you use. Uh, I just wanted to ask as well, was it difficult to get the lighting you the way you wanted it to look whilst you were shooting? Well, uh, I guess the, the great difficult is the, because we didn't have a lot of uh, interest from the light. We have a window, a door, and basically what that is a, is a closed space. Mm -hmm. And I was very, very worried about not getting the, the characters uh, in, in the shadows, you know, because they're black characters and mm -hmm. I didn't uh, want them to, to be in the shadow. So we, we took very careful about this, about the skin. And uh, we, we had a pre-production that was very great and I, in the day, I guess the great problem was the, the Christmas light, you know, the, those blinking lights. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes they didn't work, sometimes they work, <laughs> and we're like, oh, man, probably this, was like this wasn't the, the great choice to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it paid off. I mean, the Christmas lights in the film look so good. Like, it really emphasizes the holiday as well. But I, I've had problems with Christmas lights in the past, you know, one breaks, they all break, that type of thing, you know. <laughs> I find as well that issues you have when making a film um, tend to lead to more improvisation, which end up making the film better, I think. Um, so a lot of issues can lead to, you know, great things like that. Have you got any, um, uh, was there any films that inspired you in particular to, um, for in, in, in the creation of this one? Wow. Um, back in the time, in the pre-production of the film, I was very hyped about us uh, from Jordan Peele. And oh, yeah. we, we had recently watched uh, a few other stuff, like Black Christmas. Uh, we have some, also some, some Brazilian reference from the horror mm -hmm. that had also this thing like uh, a ritual, ritual horror, oh, yeah. you know, like Oja or some yeah. things like this. Mm. And Edward Terry, 
there is a, a particular scene that we took as a reference. And I mean, we try to mix all of this and create something new at the same time. It's definitely unique and it, it definitely comes across. So you know, it's paid off. I, uh, I, I can't wait to see what you come up with next. Have you got anything in the pipeline now, Eric, or uh, what's going on? Well, uh, before that, I've, I've been trying to uh, work very well on, on documentary. Actually, this is a bad, I can consider this my, my first fiction, I guess. <laughs> but, but I, I don't know, we, we, after this, we tried to make a, a movie that had a monster. I mean, it wasn't, a, a, and it's complicated to, to explain, but it's a, a movie that um, bag, uh, had a, a, a lot of elements from uh, Afrofuturism and queerness. I mean, it's a mix of all these with a monster, with a romance. It's, it's also a short film, and we are on, on post production right now. Hmm. Well, so, we're both looking forward to hearing that, I'm sure. I, I cannot uh, wait to see it. Uh, can we expect, is there a release date or anything like that, or is it just when it's done? Well, uh, we are trying to release this year, but uh, with everything that's happening, we can, we're still on editing, uh, but it, I mean, like these, we can finish these and go to um, some like sound and um, soundtracks, some, some things like this. Mm -hmm. But I can't wait to, to get back to editing, you know? I mean, yeah. I guess <laughs> next year, I this should be ready and watching the film. And I can't wait. Yeah, your passion really comes through in the films. And uh, where, can we, uh, <laughs> where can we follow you if we want to keep a track of your filmmaking? Well, um, you can uh, find me on, on some, some social medias. I mean, on Instagram, you can find me as uh, Eric uh, Nocevi, uh, mm -hmm. in Portuguese mean uh, the Nazi in Eric, something like this. <laughs> but you can find me also on, on Vimeo, it's uh, Eric Eli. It's, it's very si uh, simple to find. Mm -hmm. I have some other works there, mm -hmm. uh, some trailers of some things that are upcoming. upcoming. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to check it out. It's going to be really good. Well, thank you so much, Eric, for speaking to us today. And uh, thank you for submitting a film in general. You know, <laughs> we can't wait to show it. Oh, that's great. I, I, my pleasure. I mean, my English is uh, a little bit rusty, but I'm really <laughs> oh, glad. Well, it, sounds ex it sounds excellent to us, you know, no complaints. <laughs> well, thank you oh, again for great. speaking to us, great. Eric. Uh, hopefully we'll keep in contact and we'll see you again soon, all right? <laughs> see you again. Bye. Thank you.